Okay, so real quick, if you did yesterday's work and you got on Canvas like you were supposed to, then that means you've already done the odds on this page. You've done one, three, five, seven, and nine. So I'm gonna do some of the evens and then we're going to the back, okay? So let's start, well I don't care exactly which one do you wanna do, two, four, six, or eight. Those would be the evens. She wants to do two, okay? Remember real quick, you have to do parentheses first and pay attention to the sign. So this parenthesis has a plus sign in it, so we're gonna add first. So five and one fourth, plus two and nine sixteenths, and we're adding. Get your pencil on 16, because that's the biggest denominator. Is four times anything gonna get me that 16? Yes. 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 So we're gonna use that as our denominator, which means the bottom stays exactly the same. That doesn't change. So on the top, Nader, how do we go from four to 16? Four times what gets me 16? Who knows? Four times what? Just say four. four. So that means one times four is four. four. Now let's get rid of this inside junk. We don't need that anymore. And let's draw our arrows from the four to the nine and make sure that you know what the sign is and the sign is adding. So nine plus four, we get what? Thirteen what? Sixteenths. That takes care of the fraction. Now we gotta take care of the whole number. Five plus two is seven. seven. Now come over to number two and just gently mark out that um, parenthesis. And real little, because we don't want it to get confused with the answer, that just became seven and 13 sixteenths. <clears throat> now real quick, let's talk about this. Order matters, so in, especially in subtraction. So if 10 and 5 sixteenths comes first, look at me everybody, if 10 and 5 sixteenths comes first, then we can't put it under this. This would have to be on top. Are y'all catching me? So I can't write minus 10 and 5 sixteenths underneath there. It won't work. So I'm gonna have to rewrite it. 10 and 5 sixteenths minus the answer that we just got, 7 and 13 sixteenths. Writing this. So frustrating. Okay, what do I love about this problem so far? What do I love about it? Say it. They have the same denominators. They do have the same denominators. What do I hate about this problem? So I shouldn't say hate. What do I strongly dislike about this problem? Uh, what? The top number is smaller than You're right. I can't say 5 minus 13, can I? So I'm going to have to come over and borrow. So what does that 10 become? Nine. A 9. And the 1 that I borrowed that has to land right here, Kiara, what is that 1 going to have to look like? It would be having to be um, 16. She's exactly right. And I'm going to put a little bitty plus sign, and I'm going to circle that. Or square it or whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, really quickly, I have to combine those together because I already had 5 16 so I've got to put it with my 16 16 So 16 plus 5, real quick, would get me, say it, 21, 21 what? 16 So I'm writing that on top, and I'm marking out my circle. Okay, now I can subtract 21 minus 13. And if you can't do that in your head, that's perfectly fine. Come over to this side and write 21 minus 13, and I'll give you a few little minutes to do that. That would become a 1, and that would become an 11. And if you count from 3 up to 11, what are you going to get as a remainder? 8. Give me more. 16. Now, hold on. And now we get to subtract the whole numbers. 9 minus 7 is 2. Now, I can already tell you, Eric doesn't like my answer. Who, does anybody else strongly dislike my answer? Y'all dislike my answer? Why? What's wrong with this answer? That's a half. It is a half. But first off, what can I reduce this by? Eight. Eight. I thought somebody might say two. Okay. Could two go into eight and 16? But I can think of something bigger. You know what else I can think of? Four. Four would go in this and four would go in this. But what's the best thing to reduce this by? Eight. eight. 
And if 8 can go into 8, what's my answer going to be? 1. One. Yeah. And 8 can go into 16 two times. So PR was exactly right. The answer is 2 and 1 half. There's your answer to number 2. Always, always, always reduce your answer. Always. Okay, I'll do one more. So, Eric, do you want to do 4 or 6 or 8? Eight. Four and thirteen fourteenths minus three and one half. I'm making sure that I'm looking at my sign, and my sign in my parentheses do, does say subtraction. So I make I made sure that that was the uh, correct sign. So get your pencil on 14. <coughs> is 2 times anything going to get you that 14? Yes. yes. Why? Because 14 is even number. Because 14 is an even number, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And 2 is always going to go into an even number. So that means the top stays exactly the same. On the bottom, Bentley, how do we go from 2 to 14? Times 7. Times 7. So 1 times 7 is 7. Now I'm getting rid of this inside. I don't need this anymore. I'm drawing an arrow from my 13 to my 7, and I'm subtracting. So, hey, this is what I do. I'd slap my light on 7 and count up to 13. So, here we go. 7, 8, 8 9, 9, 10, 10 11, 12, 13. What do we get? 6. 6 what? 13. 14. And 4 minus 3 is 1. one. Now, I'm not going to lie. I really, really want to reduce that. But do you think I should reduce that first, or do you think I should go ahead and add that? Add it. You think yeah. I should add and then reduce at the very end? I think so too. Now, order, does, order doesn't matter in addition, so I can put that one and six sevenths underneath it. I can do that. So I would write it right underneath it if I were you. So can y'all think of a denominator for seven and 14? What do y'all think of? 14. 14, good which means your top fraction stays exactly the same. So Eric, on the bottom, how do we go from seven to 14? Times, times two. So what, six times two, Eric? Twelve. Twelve. Now we're adding, so draw an arrow from your six to your 12. You know what I would do? Real quick, hey, this is a trick. I would add six and 10 and then two more. So what's 6 and 10? 16. 16. And two more would be 18 what? 16. 14. And 1 and 1 gets me 2. Who loves my answer? Oh. Oh, why do y'all not love my answer? What do I need to do? Reduce it. No. I don't need to reduce yet. I got to change something. I don't need to reduce yet. What do I need to do? Divide. Divide. Tell me what to divide. Um. 14 divided by 18. Okay, look what you just told me. You said the bottom by the top. That's actually not true. It's opposite. Yeah. It's the top number divided by the bottom number. But that's okay. We're learning, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So, real quick. I want you to come to this side and I want you to write 14 times 2. Everybody. Everybody. 14 times 2. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. And 2 times 1 is 2. So what's 2 14's going to get me? 20. But I only had 18. So is it going to be able to go in there two times? Uh -huh. No, it's going to be able to go in there one time. And 1 times 14 is 14. <clears throat> and when you subtract, what's 8 minus 4 going to get me? 4. 4 over what? 14. 14. Good. Now come down to your problem and mark out 18 14. So that's not his name anymore. His name is now 1 and 4 14. Mm -hmm. So if you combine that 2 with the 1, you're going to get 3 and what? 4 14. Do y'all like that answer? No. What do y'all have against that answer? Call and tell me what to do now. You have to reduce. Now we have to reduce. Well, what can go into both 4 and 14? Hold on. First off. 
Name numbers that get me 14. What times what gets me 14? Seven. 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 Can seven go into four? No. That won't work. Seven, what's another number that'll get me 14? Seven times what? Two. 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 Will two go into both of those? Okay, how many times can two go into four? Two. 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 How many times can two go into 14? Seven. There's your answer. Three and two sevenths. Three and two sevenths. Now turn the page. Let's all do it on the front. You really should only have two problems left on the front now if you did what you're supposed to do yesterday. Number 10. Joel is two and a half inches shorter than Carlos. Carlos is one and a fourth inches taller than Dan. If Dan is 58 and a fourth inches tall, how many inches tall is Joel? So I've got three different men, so I think we should make a chart, okay? So come over to the side, I want you to put a J for Joel, a C for Carlos, and a D for Dan. It's good to make charts. It makes the teacher happy when you make charts. This is like a responsible fifth grade thing to do, okay? Now, okay, let me see your eyes so we can talk this through. Joel is two inches shorter than Carlos. So for me to figure out how tall Joel is, I got to know how tall Carlos is because I know he's shorter than Carlos. But Carlos, it doesn't tell me how tall he is either. It just says he's taller than who? Dan. Dan. So that means I got to know how tall Dan is to tell how tall Carlos is to tell how tall Joel is. Are you tracking with me? So I'm going all the way to the end. What does it tell me about Dan right off the bat that he's 58, 58 and a fourth? Hallelujah. It told me how tall Dan is. So come over here to Dan and put 58 and a fourth. And this is inches, so I'm putting inches there. And I'm going to lightly mark him out, lightly. And I'm working backwards to my problem. Okay? Because I can't come up here to Joel. Yet. Look, look at me. I can't come up here to Joel because Joel is shorter than Carlos, but I don't even know how tall Carlos is yet. Do you see why I'm working backwards? So what does it say about Carlos? That he's one and a fourth inches what? Taller, taller than, than who? Dan. And we know how tall Dan is. So if he's taller than Dan, what am I going to do, Bentley? He's taller than Dan. He's one and a fourth inches taller than that. Oh, what am I going to do? Tell add, add. add. What am I going to add? 58. 58 and what? 144. Why that? Who's that? Dan. Dan. <laughs> and I'm adding what to that? One, one, one and a fourth. fourth. And who's this going to get me? Who is this going to get me? Carlos. Carlos. So here we go. Well, what do I like about this so far? It has the same denominator. It has the same denominator. So this ought to be easy to add. A fourth. And a fourth is going to get me two fourths. And 58 and one is going to get me 59. Do you like this answer? No. What can it be reduced by? Two. two. So how many times can two go into two? One. one. How many times can two go into four? Two. two. There's your final answer for who. Who do I fill in now? Carlos. Carlos. 59 and a half inches. Mark off Carlos. You are? Yeah, one fourth. Okay, so look at the question though. We still don't know the question. The, the question is how many inches tall is who? Joel. We know Dan. We not know Carlos. Now we gotta figure out Joel. Well, what do we know about him? He's two and a half inches what? Shorter, shorter than Carlos. Bentley, what are we gonna do? If I'm shorter than you, subtract. Subtract what? Carlos. Who's how tall is Carlos, Bentley? We just wrote it on our chart. Speak up. How tall is how tall is Carlos? We wrote it on our chart. 59 and a half is Carlos, and she said subtract because he's shorter, and I totally agree with that. And how much shorter is he? Two and a half. Two and a half. Do I like the looks of this problem so far? Yeah. Why? Same denominators. Same denominators. So if I had a half a pizza, 
and my husband came and ate my half a pizza, how much pizza do I have left? Zero. Actually, I don't have zero. I have nothing. I don't want you to put zero here. I just want you to leave it blank, okay? Because if you put zero here, watch what's going to happen. What's nine minus two? Seven. Seven. What's five minus nothing? Five. Look what that looks like. It looks like your answer is 570, and it's not. What's my answer really? 57. And there's how tall Joel is, so write it right there. Inches. 57 inches. 1 inch and 1 fourth smaller than Dan. Uh-huh. Dan was the tallest, wasn't he? Okay, so was Carlos the tallest? Yeah. And Well, I meant taller than Joel, yep. I guess is what I was meaning. Yeah. And so when y'all see this on practice buddies, and you're going to make a chart, go to the end, write the one that you know, and work backwards through the problem. Okay? That's how you do that. Number 11, Susie spent six and seven eighths day working on her English paper, three and a sixth day doing her science project, and one and a half day studying for her math test. Get your pens on how. This is the question. Right? Get your pencil on how. How many more? What does how many more mean to do? Add. Okay, somebody said add. That's not true. That means subtract. Yep. Subtract right there. How many more means subtract? Well, wonder what we're subtracting. Let's see. How many more days did Susie spend on her, ooh, what does this say? English, English paper and what? Math. Math test. There's one more word right here. On, wake up. What does it say? English paper and math test. What word does it say right here? Combined. What in the world does combined mean to do? Add. Add. So put a plus sign on top of that. Then her science project. So we're going to eventually have to subtract, but we have to combine something first and say this subject. English, English and what? Math. math. That's what we have to combine. So Jake Lee, what's my number for English? I agree. There's my English. And I'm going to put a little bitty E right there beside it so I know I'm adding the right thing. What am I combining? English with math. So, Colin, what's the number for math? Three and one fifth. Mm -hmm. Three and one sixth is doing her science. That's not where we're adding. We're adding English and math. One and one half. One and one half. Get your pencil on eight. That's your biggest denominator. Is two times something going to get me that eight, class? Yes. yes. Why? Because it's bigger than the... It's an even number. It's yeah. Even so on the top, it's going to stay exactly the same. On the bottom, Brooklyn, how do we go from two to eight? So what's one times four? Four. Now get rid of this inside. Draw an arrow from your seven to your four. We're adding. So, Kiara, what's seven eighths and four eighths? Seven eighths and four eighths. Mm-mm. What's seven and four class? Eleven. Eight. Eleven eight. eighths. And six and one gets me seven. seven. So, what have I done so far in this problem? I've only done one step. What have I done? Call it out. What have I done so far? English and math. I combined the English and math, haven't I? But the very first thing said to do what? Subtract. So I still have to subtract something. So let's go back to this. I'm subtracting the days that she spent on her English and math combined, which is that. And I'm going to subtract what? Science. Science. So minus underneath here. Eric, what's the number for science? Three and one six. Three and one six. But I couldn't subtract until I combined. You have that written? Get your pencil on eight. Is six times something going to get me eight? No. no. What's my next eight then? Sixteen. Is six times something sixteen? No. No. What's my next eight then? Twenty-four. Is six times something twenty-four? Yes. yes. So that's my denominator. Luke, on the top, how do we go from 8 to 24? 
So what's 11 times 3, Luke? 33. 33. On the bottom, Mr. Xander, how do we go from 6 to 24? 6 times 8 is 48. Open them six times what gets you 24? Six. No, not six. Six times six is 36. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Four. So one times four is four. Now, here we go. We're going to subtract these numbers. And it's okay if you don't know it. 33 minus four. Come over to the side if you don't know it. Write that real quick. Or you could go backwards four. What'd you get, Kiara? Yeah. All you had to do was this became a two and that became a 13. Count from four up to 13. Huh? Nine. Nine. And the two comes straight down. So there's your top number. 29 over what class? 24. 24. Now we've got to subtract our whole numbers. What's seven minus three gonna get me? Four. Four. Do y'all like my answer? Mm -hmm. Oh, what do y'all not like about my answer? It's, uh, uh, Don't tell me reduce it yet. No. What do I need to do? It's, it's terribly improper, yeah. isn't it? The top, is... the top is way too big, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So Bentley, what do I need to do? Divide, divide what? 29. 29 divided by 24, I agree. Well, isn't 24 pretty close to 29? Yeah. yeah, so I think it's going to go in there one time. And look where I put the 1 over the 9. And 1 times 24 is 24. <clears throat> so when you subtract, Eric, what's 9 minus 5? 4 going to get me? 5. 5 over what, Eric? Over 24. 24. He's exactly right. So now come down to your 2924, so mark him out. That's not his name anymore. His new name is 1 and 524. Do y'all like my answer now? No. You still don't like my answer? What is wrong with my answer now? Yes, Adam. You have to combine the whole numbers, don't you? So, Jake Lee, what's my final answer? 5 and 524. And, and that was in days. A lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Number 12. Veronica needs to buy one and three fourths pounds of cheese. When the clerk places some cheese in a, what does this say right here? What does this say? What is it like? I want you to think about like a Tupperware container. Do y'all know what we're talking about? Like when you would have a leftover and you would put something in the container, okay? Now think about this. The container has some weight too. Like, I don't know whose water bottle this is. Whose is it? Do y'all, does anybody know? I must have left it last hour. But let's, let's think about this. If you go, how much water, how much does this weigh? Well, you can't really just tell me how much the water weighs because isn't this in a container? Yeah. So if you want to tell me how much this weighs, what are you going to have to do? Pour it out. Mm -mm. What are you going to have to do about the weight of the container? If you want to tell me how much just the water weighs, just the water in this, how am I going to find that out? Subtract, Subtract the what? The weight, the, the weight of the container. I got to get rid of the weight of the container. It'd be like, Miss Coffey, how much do you weigh? Well, I really don't want to weigh in my shoes. And I really don't want to weigh with my big heavy earrings. And I really don't want to weigh with my coat. So what should I have to do? Get rid of those, shouldn't I? It's the same exact thing. So she needs some cheese. And this is how much cheese she needs. But the clerk places some cheese in us. Say this word. Container. Say it, container. And weighs it. The scale shows that. Well, this is how much the container weighed. So what did Colin tell me to do? What do I have to do with my cheese? I got to subtract the container from it. And this is how much I have right now. This is what I need. This is what it says on the scale. Okay, are y'all tracking with me? So I need to say one and a fourth. 
and I need to get rid of the container. Get your pins on 16 because that's the biggest denominator. Kiara, is four times anything going to get me 16? Yes, so I'm going to use it. That means the bottom fraction stays exactly the same. What about the top, Brooklyn? How do I go from four to 16? Times four, and one times four is four. Now get rid of this inside. Draw your arrows for them from the four to the one. And four sixteenths minus one sixteenths is gonna give, give me three sixteenths, and one minus nothing is one. Okay, we're not done. That just tell me how much just the cheese weighs without the container. Are y'all tracking with me? We got rid of the container. What did I need? Say this number. One and three fourths. Four. What do I have? One and three sixteenths. How many more pounds of cheese should be added to the scale to get the amount that Veronica needs? How many more? What does how many more mean to do? Subtract. So I'm going to have to say this minus this, okay? One and three fourths is what I need minus one and three sixteenths is what I have. Well, Jake Lee puts a denominator for four and sixteen. She's exactly right. And which means the bottom stays exactly the same. Luke, on the top, how do we go from 4 to 16? 4. 4. So what's 4 times 3, Luke? 12. 12. Let's get rid of this inside. I don't need them. Draw an arrow from your 12 to your 3. 12 minus 3 is what, class? 9. 9 what? 16. And 1 minus 1 is nothing. Don't put a 0. Okay, don't put a 0. This would be so wrong. You would never, ever do that. So it's 9 sixteenths of what? Pound. Of pound. How do you abbreviate pound? I told you guys this many times. LB. Number 13. At a museum, Jenny learned about the fossil that was 3,400,000,000 years old. Write the fossil's age in standard form, underline that, and expanded form, underline that. Do y'all remember a long time ago what the definition I gave you for standard form? It said the plain, plain old number. So I need you to write 3 billion, 400 million, like a plain old number. So here's my 3 billion. That's easy. That's easy. How would I write 400? How do I write 400? Four, four, zero, zero. Four, zero, zero. Million. So now let's look at this. <clears throat> do y'all like my answer? Is this 3 billion, 400 million? No. What have I got? 3,400. 3, I need that to be 3 billion, Xander. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Somebody tell me. Add zeros. Add zeros. How many more zeros? Let's just start with this first. Who likes my answer now? Am I at 3 billion? Say this number. Uh, that's 3 billion. 3 billion. What? 400,000. Does this say 3 million? No. What does this say? 3 billion. What do I need to do? Add a zero. Add one zero? Yes. No, three zeros. So go all the way to the very end of this number and tell me the places, okay? What place would this be? Ones, tens, hundreds. What's this? Thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. What's this? Oh gosh. A million. Millions? Ten, ten millions. millions? Hundred millions. What's this? 
Billion. billion. Does this say three billion? Is yes. it in the right place? Yes. Okay, that takes care of standard form. Put a check mark by it. Now, expanded form. So basically what you're doing is you're breaking down every number. So we're only breaking down that number and that number. So what is that number right there? What did you just tell me? Three billion. Three what? Billion. billion. So write three billion. That would have nine zeros. You need nine zeros. And what's my next number? Four, what is this? 400 million. 400 million, then write that. You would have eight zeros with that. Wow. And then you're done. You know, remember when we learned exponents? That would have been so much easier to then be done in exponents. Then you wouldn't have to put so many zeros. Number 14, four students. Raise $264 for a charity by washing cars. The students received $8 for each car they washed. How many cars did they wash? Well, here's what I know. Look at me. They gave you the total first. The big number came first. And they're saying, this is how much we raised. And you know how we raised it? $8 here, $8 here, $8 here, $8 here. $8 here, $8 here. I split it up into $8 a piece. What does split up mean? Subtract. No. Multiply. It, split up means divide. Split up means divide. $264. And we're going to divide by $8 a car. There must be a lot of cars. Split up means divide up. Well, if I'm an 8, Bentley, can I dive into a 2? You got, can I? No, if I'm an eight, can I dive into 26? Yes. Tell me how many times. Eight times what is gonna get you as close as you can to 26? Three. three. Look where I'm putting it, over the six, not over the two. What was eight times three, Bentley? I should have said 24, underneath it, right, 24. Gosh, we have to know our multiplication facts. Let's subtract. 6 minus 4 gets you two. 2. So far, your paper should look just like my paper. Yep. Now, we got to bring this 4 straight down. So now we got to ask ourselves, is 8 times something going to dive into 24? Yes. How many times? Three. And it's not just 3. It's 3 times exactly, isn't it? So I'm done. There's your answer. 33 cars. Split up means divide. Y'all were guessing on that. Somebody said subtract. That's not true. Split up doesn't mean subtract. Somebody said multiply. Multiply would get bigger. Split up means we're dividing it up. Number 15. Put one and three fourths in every one of these squares. And I'll do one with you. So, Jake Lee, do you want to do the first, the second, the third, or the fourth one? Um, the second. Okay. She wants to do the second. So, two and five twelfths. Minus one and three fourths. And if we get the answer two thirds, then we're going to mark yes. If we don't get the answer two thirds, then we're going to have to mark no. Get your pencil on 12. That's the biggest denominator. Is 4 times something going to get you that 12? Yes. Yes. One person can tell me that. I'm beginning to think one person knows their multiplication facts. On top, 5 12 stays 5 twelfths. On the bottom, Luke, how do we go from 4 to 12? 3. 3. What's 3 times 3, Luke? 9. 9. And I'm subtracting... If I have five cookies, can y'all come take nine cookies no. from me? No, you can't. So tell me what to do, Brooklyn. Um, make him a one, and the one that I took away has to land right here. What does it look like, Brooklyn? Look, if I'm on twelfths, it's got to look like twelve twelfths. I'm going to put a circle around that. 
So Eric, 12 twelfths and 5 twelfths gives me what? 17 twelfths. 17 now I've rented this circle. And I'm subtracting, so 17 minus 9. Slap your leg on 9 and count up to 17. 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. What'd you get? Eight. Eight what? Twelve. Twelve. Now look over here at my whole numbers. One minus one is nothing. Don't put a zero there. Do y'all like my answer? No. What's wrong with my answer? It's even. I gotta reduce it, don't I? Yes. Okay. We'll start with you. Tell me something bigger than two that can go in both eight and twelve. Four. Four can go into eight how many times, class? Two. two. Four can go into twelve how many times, class? Three. Three. Is two thirds two thirds? Yes. yes. And I'm afraid some of y'all would have marked that no because y'all would have got eight twelves. Do you see what they tried to do? They tried to trick you. They wanted you to mark no because they said eight twelfths isn't the same as two thirds, but it really is if you reduce it, okay? On um, 16, write two and a half in every one of those boxes. Here, I'll let you pick which one you want to do. First, second, third, or fourth? First. First. Nine and one eight. Minus six and three fourths. the top's going to stay exactly the same. Mm -hmm. On the bottom, Colin, how do we go from 4 to 8? Times 2. Times 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. Mark out this inside. We have a problem. We can't say 1 8 minus 6 8. So, Jake Lee, mm -hmm. tell me what to do. If I can't say 1 minus 8, I'm going to have to go where, Jake Lee? This side will mark that. Make that 9 and 8, and that one that I borrowed has to land right here. Last time, Brooklyn told me it was 12 twelfths. Do you want it to be 12 twelfths? No. Why not? Because my denominator is different, isn't it? What's my denominator now? So it needs to be 8 eighths. Good job. I'm like, I'm going to circle that because I have to combine those together. So Xander, what's 1 8 plus 8 eighths? Nine eighths. Get rid of this. <coughs> now I can subtract. Nine eighths minus six eighths is going to leave me what class? Three eighths. Three eighths. Don't forget your whole number. Eight minus six is going to leave me two. two. Let's see if this can be reduced real quick. When you think of eight, what do you think? What times what gets you eight? Four, Four times two. two. Can four go into three? No. Can two go into three? No. So then I'm done. So is two and three eighths the same as two and a half? No. No. So you have two on the front, and you have three on this side and three on that side. Okay, go. Okay. 